the reasons I'm doing the second a second Bond movie are the reasons I would do any movie really, which is all to do with the story. Um, <clears throat> if there's a story you feel like you you have to tell, um, then you end up doing it really, um, and that's what's happened here. It's partly that I felt a kind of ownership of the characters a little bit uh, from Skyfall, so I felt like you know I'd initiated Rafe as M and. Uh, Naomi as Money Penny and Ben Whishaw as Q, and I wanted to tell their stories, the next stage of their stories, really, because you spend so much time in Skyfall just setting them up as characters, um, but this movie takes them into um, further into their own stories and and uh, develops them as characters much much more. Bond had the tradition of doing things for real, you know. Uh, you don't put people in a green screen studio and create these vast, you know, um, uh, fantasy landscapes that sit behind them. Because I think that <clears throat> an audience feels and senses and expects Bond to be real in terms of stunts, in terms of environments and locations. He has to go to Morocco, he has to go to Mexico City, he has to go to the Alps. And, the, you know, you don't want green screen shots of those places. You have to feel it. And I believe, and I think a lot of filmmakers now believe, you really can tell the difference, and um, audiences can. They're so sophisticated. Um, the only downside is when you do find an incredible landscape with an extraordinary sunset, you, everyone on the crew has the same thought, which is everyone's going to think it's a visual effect. <laughs> and you sort of, oh, well, we'll just have to go for it and tell everyone in the press back that we really were there and it really did, the sun really did set like that. It's really how Bond develops um, that's interesting and how he develops as an actor and as a, a collaborator. And I think that where in the last movie we're asking him to be very vulnerable, to be very human and sometimes to look really quite shabby in a way, and allow himself to look weak and older and, you know, unshaven. And, you know, here I think he's got a greater wisdom. I think he's lived through the death of M. He has a kind of um, understanding and empathy for people. Um, and I think that it's that that leads him through this story, that he's not a blunt instrument. He doesn't just go in there and kill everyone, you know, that's in his way. Um, and M, in fact, it's a great speech in the movie about what it takes to kill a man. And a license to kill, he says, is also a license not to kill. And, and that, you know, it's about whether to pull the trigger or not. It's about whether or not to... Um, pursue the life he's always pursued um, whether it means anything whether he matters why he cares why it's important to care what does he stand for and is he going to keep doing it and those things um, are are things that are new to Daniel in in his role as Bond because he's never asked those questions of himself before. But after Skyfall and nearly dying and watching other people die and actually living in a world where people are aging, which has not traditionally been the Bond way, he now he is himself has to make those decisions as to whether he's going to continue or not. And you'll have to come to see the movie to find out whether he does.